Any advice for the people making your Hall of Fame bust? <laughs> do you want do you want a certain haircut? Would you like this smile? The yeah, I want this smile here. This smile right here. <laughs> I, I want I want this 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 face trim everything this fresh okay. thing just like this. You know just I'm hold saying? hold hold still for the camera for a yeah, second. Man. That Indeed, that's that. what that's what we want. Dude, hey. I just said it offline, but congrats, uh, dude. I I just got a little emotional watching you and Erica and your kids walk around in the back. I mean, like seeing you from day one, being a kid, like rolling up on campus, so to speak, in Earth City. You know, like kind of green, but but not that green. Like you were kind of a, a pro. But the fact now that you are a family man with a bunch of kids and you said after 10 years, I'm done, dude. There's yeah. much more to life than football. I'm just so proud of you, man. I'm so proud you. of you. I appreciate you. That shit, it went fast, man. I, I remember coming in as a rookie, you know what I'm saying? Like, in, in 14, I, everything just, I remember all y'all saying, like, I, I remember older guys just saying, like, how fast it go. And at the time you hear, but it's like, it flies, man. It's, I feel like it was just yesterday. I was just coming in as a rookie, um, trying to learn everything, trying to get comfortable. So um, to go 10 years, had a career I had, bro, and um, be able to leave on top of my own terms, um, happy, satisfied, full, complete, um, no second guessing, nothing, man. It's a blessing. So That's that's what you said. You were full. Isn't that what you told McVay? Yeah, I'm full. That's what he said you said. I'm full. It's just... I just didn't want nobody to think it was like no second guessing. Like it, it was like it, it is what it is. I felt like you know, there's nothing I didn't accomplish that I didn't feel. And then from the game of football, I feel like um, from an individual accolade standpoint, from a defensive player, I experience every high you can experience, every award you can experience. From team success, I experience everything you can experience. From the team success, and um, was blessed to play this game and make a, a good amount of money doing it. So um, you know, you know, you take a toll on your body after a while. Um, you know, pre preparing every single and every day, people don't understand what's going behind the scenes. You know, so um, it, it was it was all year round with me. So I was just tired, man. I was full, I was tired of the doubles and triple teams too. But it, it was just, you know, it was it was time for me to just, you know, walk away and, um, you know, um, to be able to do that in ten years and accomplish what I accomplished and feel what I felt from this game, um, build the relationships I built from this game, man. It's like I'm I'm so complete. I'm so happy. Um, you know, with, with, with the success, with, with the relationships I was able to build, you know, um, coming into a great D-line room in St. Louis with, with you guys, like, like, you know, I couldn't be, I couldn't have been set up no better than what I was, bro. Honestly, I always tell people that, man, like, they had the D-line room I had, to have Coach Wolf, you know, one of the greatest defensive line coaches, in my opinion, to, to do it, um, well, of course you think that. He let you do whatever the fuck you want you want to do. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it just it was just man, I'm, I'm just happy, bro. I really am yeah. happy, man. I am. No, Waff was the man. I just talked to Waff the other day. He's you know he's in I'm sure he's called you a bunch, but I he's in Europe. Like, last like two weeks ago. Um you know, I was on the he was on the phone for like two hours. So You always are, dude. Yeah. Well, mine lasts an hour. I'm pretty sure yours <laughs> last two hours. You're gonna get you off the phone. Aaron, 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 I got a new idea for a chop club. There you go. That's, that's yeah. Get to the back, get to the back. <laughs> um No, but like, dude, you know, you, you referenced the group text. Um there's a bunch of guys in there. There's like Kendall, Kendall. Eugene, Will. The whole gang, you know, I don't want to forget anybody. There's like 10 guys in there. Laronitis in there. We let one linebacker in there. But I'm watching this interview of you and Erica, and she did a great job, by the way. It only took her 10 minutes, 40 seconds to get you to cry. <laughs> and uh, all I remember, and now we can laugh about it because you're, you're goaded and you got a ring and everything, but is when you had the audacity to cry on national TV, <laughs> shed a single tear. And I think you guys lost a playoff game or something. Mm -hmm. And like, you were sad. You were legit sad. And I was sitting back like, I don't want to bother big fella, but I opened the group text. And the dude, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the group text, they are filleting you over crying. <laughs> dude. <laughs> 
I'm mad as hell. I'm like, it's the what? same day as the game. Yeah, but but um, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> was that nuts or what? Was that yeah, too was. far from no, those I'm guys? Mad, I, I was mad as hell too. I was gonna um, <laughs> no, because I was hurt. I had the rib injury, so I, I, I was disappointed in myself because I couldn't do more to help the team. So yeah. uh, that definitely, I was, you should have seen me in a shower after that game. I'm, I'm in there like. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I was hurt, man. I was so hurt. The best bro. place to cry. They can't tell how much you're going to that share. Crying like a baby. It's quick, it's quick to stop. I'm like, what the hell? But and then you look at your phone, you see all these test- people laughing, thinking it's a joke. Oh. I was a little I was a little upset with that. But you know, um, you know, football is an emotional sport. You, yeah. got, your, you got your lows, man. It comes I cried. It. I cried like a baby after I didn't know I didn't know I was gonna cry. But after what I what I was pretty sure was going to be my last game, because when I went into that last game against New Orleans when we played in the playoffs mm-hmm. and we came up short, like I went in the locker room and I was like 50-50. Is this going to be the last time I put a helmet on? Like weird thoughts like that, yeah. dude. Like I've been doing this every day. Sick, stuffy, congested, mm-hmm. uncomfortable, sore. I put this fucking helmet on and it's made me who I am. And now I might not put it on ever again. It's a weird thought. Yeah. And then I get in the locker room. And I just start bawling. Yeah. And I guess I was like, now I know it's over. You know, did you know after the Detroit game? Yes. Because, you know, again, I'm, I'm a guy that's emotional. I definitely have to play off loss. You know, I'm usually mad, upset. But after the game, bro, I was I was in such a good spirit, bro. I was I was proud how, to, how we fought. I felt like we didn't start the game off well as a defense. But it's incredible. I, then nobody quit. I in my mind, bro, we was going to win that game. I didn't think we was going to lose that game at all. And the guy was playing hard to the to the last play. You know, I was proud of him. You know, and I knew it was not going to be my last game. So, you know, just looking. You know, Erica, the family was there. So I'm waving at the family in a suite up yeah. top. You know, just fans saying, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm waving at the fans. I hugged my D-line coach. I hugged. Kev or Chapel guy, we walking off the yeah. field and I got smiles. I'm just taking, I'm just absorbing, taking it all in, bro. And it's like, this is the last time that, you know, I'm going to have these shoulder pads hammering on and get the, you know, experience walking off an of NFL football field. I went to the locker room. I remember hugging Sean. He said, that's it. He said, he said, that's it. I remember walking in there, giving, you know, just, you know, embracing a lot of people, players, tell them how much I appreciate them. I remember taking my shoulder pads off for the first, last time. And that's when it really just like hit me. I'm like, damn, this is the last time I'm going I'm going to ever do this. And I remember getting on one knee, taking my untying my spike, about to take my spike off. And I thought about like, this is the last time that I'm ever going like in a locker room and let me lacing, unlacing my spike, taking it off. This is this the last time. And my eyes start watering, I had to catch it real quick like this. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. Not again. I had to catch it real quick like this. Like, you caught this, it, like, you caught the tear. <laughs> And I'm like this, and I'm like, you know, you got to just let that, let it absorb for a minute, wipe your ass, uh-huh. and, like, and just finish just taking it all in, man. So um, I knew it, and I, and I, you know, I, I took every last moment of it in, bro. And it, um, it was, I feel like I did it the right way, you know, when I wanted to, and I, I'm just happy. I really am happy. So, well, you should be, man. And I got, I got a little. I told you I was doing the same thing just 30 seconds ago when Erica's walking across with your little little dude. And I'm just watching you go through this stage of life. And, like, anybody who's in that D-line room, we're all just so proud of you because, you know, we watched it from the beginning. And, you know, when, when when I heard you retired, you know, my text to you was nothing happened on accident. Yeah. You, you know, And you know what I mean by that? Because there's a lot of guys that had your talent, maybe not quite your talent, but they didn't have your work ethic. And the question that made you tear up was about your dad. Yeah. Why are they so inextricably linked? Your work ethic and your dad, who you are and, and your dad. Because he's the one that gave me the work ethic. You know, he's the one yeah. that, you know, as a as a twelve year old kid that that grew up lazy, was going through a little chubby stage. He's the one that, you know, <laughs> that grabbed me and took me down to the weight room. He's the one that I remember as a kid, all the motivational things he was saying to me to, and told me how everything was going to play out if I put the body at work. And he told me how my body was going to change if I put the work. And he, he told me the success I would have playing football, doing the work when nobody's watching. When everybody else is asleep, you speak. When everybody else is asleep, you working. So, the, you know, the, 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 the see that everything come full circle, man. And um, it just started from a weight room, right in the basement, just working on my dad. Just I just wanted to be strong because my dad was strong. I wanted to have muscles because my dad had muscles. So, um, and then now he was in the room with us. He was right behind the camera. So it was a, it was a lot more emotional, man, to be able to. Oh yeah, he was there. You know, just tell my story, and you know, he, him be there, and you know, you think about the, you go back into the past, and you remember the moments, man, and it just, 
it just kind of warm your heart up and you know you know how emotions be so um you know he, he obviously both of my parents played a huge role my older brother um, my older sister um you know my family members that played up played a huge role but as far as when it comes to work ethic and you know the way I am the way I was structured from the from how I was as a professional um I, I definitely would give that credit to my dad because um you know he he always said you know, lifting weights ain't gonna just change the way you look and you know it's gonna change the way you carry yourself in your everyday life yeah. Um, it, it really did, bro. It, it really did, you know, and, and it's kind of like I'm addicted to working now. I still work out every single day now. I'm in the weight room every day. So what's it look like now? What's the civilian workout look like for you? It's pretty much the same. Only thing that's different is I'm not on the field with my trainer, Dwayne Brown. I told him mm -hmm. I'm not running with no spikes. I'm not cutting. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing none of that no more. So <laughs> you ain't got to worry about me hitting you up about that no more. So it's just strictly running. I mean, I'm in the weight room, probably do some cardio, do some bike cardio. But that's it, bro. You know, every day doing something to just you know, make me feel good because I like to look good, you know, so. One of the biggest things for me was, and I I feel like it's not a negative, but to be afraid is okay. Be afraid of failure. Be afraid that somebody's outworking you. Be afraid that you're not going to be good enough. And I mean this as a compliment. You always seemed a healthy amount of insecure. Is that accurate? What you mean when you say that as far as? Afraid to fail. Afraid somebody else is doing more than you. Well, yeah, that's 100% sure. Because yeah. a lot of people, even early in my career, you know, I always felt like I, I, I was always a hard worker. And I yeah. started following people like, you know, A.B. when he was with the Steelers, his prime. And I feel like I have a good workout and I'll be seeing his stuff. And I'm like, all right. And, I, and then he'll post something else for like a, a second workout that day. And like stuff like that, I'd be like, damn, I feel like he outworking me. You know, it wasn't yeah. just my position. I didn't want nobody to feel like they was outworking me. So I was like, I, sometimes I follow people, guys in the, in the league that was, that was having success that I just want to see what they was doing, how they was working, you know? Because if I felt like if I had a great work, I feel good. I'm at the house, you know, I'm done for the day. Yeah. As far as working out wise, I'm looking at they doing a the second work. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I got to go do some more. So yeah. but you always find things that motivate you, bro, to push you, you know, because like I tell people all the time, like when you make a name for yourself, you can you cannot allow yourself to be satisfied. You cannot allow yourself to be comfortable because right. now your job get ten times harder. Now you got multiple guys, teams trying to game plan and just stop one player and not allow you to do your job. So yeah, um, if I was to let myself be satisfied with what I was doing or what I accomplished past years, then I wouldn't. I, the future wouldn't be as what it is today. You know, my mindset was always that year is over. Now I got to make a name for myself all over again. So. Um, that was my mindset, bro, just to keep – just if I felt like somebody's not working, I got to do more. I got to do more. I was trying to find ways to do more until, you know, I was able to accomplish everything that I wanted to accomplish in this game. And it's like – now it's like, okay, what's, now what's, what's motivating you now? Right, let's try to get another Super Bowl ring. You try to mo get motivated by that. But um, when you when you accomplish everything, you get to feel every high and you feel like, you know, if you were to lead this game today, you'd be happy. And, you know, I was able to, you know – do the things I was able to do in, in, a, in a short amount of time and, you know, in eight years and just yeah. extra two years was just a, um, a blessing to try to, you know, duplicate that again as far as winning another Super Bowl. Didn't do it, but um, I got to enjoy it, man. I got to, um, this last year was just having fun. I knew it was going to be my last year, so I just took it all, you man. coming in. Just having fun, bro, and I just, I just wanted to enjoy it like I, if I was a kid playing it like I was 12, 13 years old again. So that's yeah. what I did. I texted Byron to be like, yo, did I miss anything these last couple of years? Like, give me something good to ask, you know, Aaron. And he was like, he played with a different kind of passion this year. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting to me because you said, you know, my passion is, you know, that's when I'm not as passionate about playing the game. Um, that's when it's time to walk away. So at the end of the season, when you say, hey, I don't have as much passion right now, I've identified that. Where does that show up? Is it like I don't enjoy meetings as much anymore? I'm not as hungry or what is it? Because I know what it was for me. I'd be curious for you. So for me, after this, like, I don't have the urge as far as like, if you like, I, I never liked the camp. That was, the only thing I didn't like about football was, was camp. What it was camp time. And that was since high school from college to the pros. I never liked camp. It's just, even you don't like camp. It, it's too time consuming. It's just, you wait from your, yeah, you away from your family all damn day. You, yeah. I, I, don't, I like working, but it's like, all the extra shit. Let us just get her work in, do what yeah. we need to do. Let's go home. Like all mm -hmm. the, you don't, you're not done to eight o'clock at night or seven o'clock. Busy work. Come on, man. Like they used to keep us in those for meeting weeks. rooms for no reason. It's for. I remember we first moved to St. Louis. We was in a damn, uh, living in the dorm for like a month. 
I'm like, stuff's a, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's, I just was never a fan of camp, bro. So I just don't have the passion. Yeah. Thinking about having another camp, I'm like, there's no way. That's why my, my two holdout years was, like, I, I was loving that. Like, I don't got to do camp. I just train. I'm, <laughs> I'm with the family now, and I come back with the season. I, I, I actually enjoyed that. But um, I just don't have the passion to go through another I was going thinking about the season and the yeah. work, all the things I got to do to keep my body up to keep. I just don't got the urge to do it no more. So the passion to play the game is no longer there. So if I was to come back, I feel like I'm just coming back for a check, you know. And I can't disrespect the game of football like that and just play for money, you know. I never was that guy. I can't be that guy now because if I was to do that, I wouldn't be the same player that you I wouldn't be I here. Was. Yeah. So yeah, and and it's funny because like people ask me, hey, you missed the game, and for a couple of years I really did. And now, like, yeah, I'll miss it on Sunday. You know, when I'm watching, like, the competitor in me is like, I can make that play. Yeah, exactly. Even though your body is like, no, you can't do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, um, the whole thing is, if you're not willing to do all those things, you can't miss the game. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, it's not, it's not fair for me to say I miss the game if I'm not willing to do all those little things that you, you and I are both saying, hey, at this juncture, no moss. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, training camp or, you know, for me it was meetings and, you know, some of the politics of, you know, football and, and all that. But, like, um, is there anything about retirement that scares you? Um, Not really. It's just not knowing as far as – and when I say not knowing, um, it's more how I'm going to feel when the season's actually around. Like, in my, right now, I'm like, I'm happy. I'm at peace. Um, I got the development company going on, Donald Development Group, where, you know, we got 38 units that we're working on Pittsburgh, on Hunter Street in Pittsburgh. We, we just did some meetings to – potentially you know get some more projects coming our way so um we got the ready brand that's doing amazing that they got yeah. ownership in so um ad99 solutions so i got things that i'm focusing on things that i'm going that that got to the point where we got an income coming in but as far as knowing what's going to happen when the season come around and I, i'm not on the field i'm not a part of it i don't know how i'm going to feel in my head i'm like i'm going to be happy watching it on tv or watching it in the stands now but i don't know so it's just um, for me, it's just not knowing how I'm going to feel, really, because you never know into it into his time, right? So, you ever thought about the movies? Yeah. So that, that's something that you, man, you, you, you see this these good look. I know, dude. But yeah. hey, you but no, last honestly, week I was the one who said, "Hey, this guy needs to be, he needs to be an action star." Yeah, so we go, I'm a, we going to do something. Um, obviously, you guys need to take some classes, and it's a process. But um, um, that's something down the road that I'm potentially um, looking for and looking into doing too. So. Dune three. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm working, hey, hey, hey Chris. I'm, I'm just working, man. I'm, you know, we still got to make an income. We got to still keep it going there. Still got I bills hear to you, pay, bro. I you know, hear I'm, you, I'm bro. I'm working for my kids and my kids and their kids. So, um, just yeah, man. Build generational wealth, bro. So, man, um, that's awesome. Just finding ways to keep, you know, any opportunities that come my way. I'm all ears. I'm listening, and um, if it makes sense, and if we can make something happen, then you know that, that's what I'm, I'm. I'm just working. So. That's awesome. Well, did you get any cool, like, text that blew you away after you retired? I'm sure you got, like, a million, but, like, something that blew you away or somebody reached out to you that you were like, damn, that's awesome. Um, a lot of people reached out, bro. It was like, I know a lot of, through social media, a lot of people reached out. There was so much stuff when it came out. Like, you, you want to see everything, but it's, it just was so overwhelming. It was so much, you couldn't even see it. So a lot of things that, like, my brother showed me or my wife had to show me as far as, like, you know, LeBron reaching out, um, you know, Magic Johnson reached out. If I, um, Durant reached out. A lot of people that, you know, that, that's great players and, and great Nate Arrows and did a lot of great things reached out and, um, just to congratulate me on my career. That was like, you know, it's pretty special, bro. Like when you think about, you know, how many people reached out, you know, Warren Sat reached out, um, a bunch of guys. I well, can't when you start out. with LeBron, it's like, yeah, my buddy LeBron <laughs> reached out, dude. Like you're pretty damn famous. So, um, Hey, now that you're retired, dude, I feel like it's time to let some of the the secret sauce out of the bag, so to speak, here. Um, tell me something nobody knows about Aaron Donald's game plan, how he rushes every week, now that nobody can adjust to it. Well, that, that's, you know. Or are you coming come back from... this fall? <laughs> yeah, no. But no, no it, all come, it depends, bro, because for me, the way I go again to a game, it's all about my film study. It's all about what I watch on film. Where I, you know, you got guys that they don't got an anchor. You know, it's going to be a, a power game, and yep. you can be able to work your power pop, then switch it up. Now he's guessing. He's, he's going to panic a lot because he ain't got an anchor. So now he's going to lean a lot so you can hit with, like, depends if he's a high-hand punch or low-hand punch, if you got your swipes or your chop club. So it's, it all depends the guy I'm going against, the way I study him. Um, 
you know, there's, there's weeks you see it and you'd be like, oh, this is going to be a, you know what type of week it's going to be, you know, if mm-hmm. you get the one-on-one opportunity. So, um, you know, my game plan was always different because I knew I was going to have two or three guys. So it was more, you know, I'm watching film. I study the guys. Then I got to go to my D-line coach's room and break down film to figure out different schemes we can do that, you know, help free me up and um, to try to get them one-on-ones. If I, if I can get the, at, at the nose tackle position, if they're a three-tech, or if I need to bounce to the end of trying to get a one-on-one. But I started to go to the end. They started to always bring a tight end or I back the chip. So it was like, you know, you always had somebody following you. So it, that's it, like later in the career, that's what it became, just trying to find ways to, 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 to find one-on-ones. But it was, it all depends on the film study. It's like it's it's like so much. It ain't, it's not like a, for me. It's not a simple answer, you know. So, um, you know, because there's a lot that go into you know game planning and getting ready for a opponent. You know, you know that. Yeah. So well, it's a, it's like a catch twenty two. You got so good that like it's good to be a certain amount of good. Where it's like, hey, I'm good at what I do. But then when you're better than that, <laughs> they start making it harder. <laughs> you know, yeah. and you just mentioned all the things that go into like for me. I go and I know I get some chip or whatever and maybe some slide, but I was working on winning one-on-ones. Yeah. And you're working on basically some sequence of, of, you know, a thought process of am I getting slide? You know, how can we line up to get the slide somewhere else? Or can we occupy the guard? Can we bring a backer down to try to free you up? Can we move you outside? That's stressful. It makes your job complicated. I guess I'm wondering, like, was there one team that always had a good plan? Philly, I hated playing against Philly. Kelsey, his little fast ass always ran full. He would snap the ball and run over right now. And just I'm like, bro, you got some good guards. Let them work. You don't got to help them every time. I'm not letting you. We're not going to let you ruin the game. And I'm like, God, every single play, I, every time I played the Eagles, bro, I really never really got no one-on-ones. I probably had like one or two during the game, and that would be it. If you don't win any one-on-one that time, then you're done. You're going to get doubled and triple team for the rest of the game. It was always Philly. I felt like – um Early in my career, I felt like um, the Saints had a good game plan. They were always slide to protection, and they were always had the, um, the tackle choke down. So before he jump out to the to the to the end, he gonna punch me, close up the B gap, and get out. Your the now the A gap's closed because the center slid. Now you know they're trying to just grab. Now you just gotta try to work off that. So um, that's two teams that popped popped in my head right away. And then like the last few years, I think. Um, um, the 49ers did a good job of keeping me out the game as far as if that's running the ball away from me or just keeping things away to the point where, you know, you even trying to chase things down from the backside or, or you know, just trying to find ways to, to, to get the one-on-ones. And when you do get the one-on-ones, you know, they can get the ball out quick. So, them, them was the three teams that popped in my head right away. So, When, when, I, when, when you talk about the Rams now, because now you're in a unique position where you know so much ball, but when you're a player, you can't really weigh in on your own team like that. But looking at the, the division – and, you know, San Francisco and, and what they got going on. What do the Rams have to do to continue to hang in there? I mean, I think you got one of the best quarterbacks in the league as long as yes. he's healthy. So that's a big one. But what do you think the Rams have to do to keep pace in that division? What's the key to beating the Niners with regularity? I, I think they I think they got it. We got a great offense. The Rams, we got a great offense. I think they just added as far as beefing up the offensive line to help with the running game and, and protecting staff. I think they still got some key pieces at wide receiver. They still got Cooper Cup. They still got Puka. Um, they got Robinson. They brought him back. So they got some good pieces on defense. I think we got we got good guys on the edge, but we, I think we can can help with some edge help, and we can. And I think they did a good forward bringing some corners in and some guys in the secondary to help so I think they're in a good position right now bro if anything I w- if I was to say one thing the Rams need just a, a little bit of help with right now just with I would say just the edge rusher just getting an extra edge rusher that some guy that got some experience or find a good dra- guy in a draft that can get it done because you see what we did in the draft last year nobody expected us to be the team and a lot of the rookies end up making names for themselves and dominating so if you get another piece like that that can help on the edge I think I think the Rams is going to be a great team. It's going to be fun to watch. And like I'm, I'm excited to watch the Rams play this year. You know, I know I'm not, I'm not going to be out there, but I just feel like they're going to have a lot of success, bro. I really do. Uh, um, I think they got all the pieces they need. Add a piece here as far as on the defense, as far as the edge guy, and then I think they um, they, they made some moves to help help them get better. So, Kobe Turner, um, <laughs> he remind you of anybody? I mean, like the 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 kid can play. Yeah. I mean, he, he certainly had a, a good draw playing next to you, but I think he's going to be all right on his own too. Yeah, Kobe's good. He, um, he, 
he got the, he, he want to be great. He asks a lot of questions. He's always, um, you know, if it's a text message, whatever it is. Kobe, I, I love Kobe. Kobe's just Kobe. He's just him. You know, he, he ain't going to let nobody change him. He's not going to act different because he's around somebody. He's just going to be himself. And that's what I love about him. But um, he's a guy that's, that love football, bro. He love playing. I think he continue to get better. Like I told him, now it's time for you to, you know, to grow into that leadership role, you know, because you the guy on the D-line now. You know what I'm saying? You you the guy. You the name. So mm -hmm. um, you got to keep working. You got to bring guys along with you and um, you just don't allow yourself to be satisfied. Don't allow yourself to be comfortable. That's the only the best advice I can give to, you know, young guys because that's what I did. I just I never allowed myself to be comfortable and I kept working and, you know, the things that came from that um, is things that um, is bigger than anything you ever dreamed. So um, I think he's going to be a good football player. I'm um, a great football player if he keep working. I think he had a, a hell of a career. He should have won defensive rookie of the year, in my opinion, um, for what he did as a nose tackle. You know, he, everybody, he don't understand. He's not a three tech. He's a nose tackle that had nine sacks. Yeah. He, yeah. I, no, he, I was three tech. He was nose tackle. Mm -hmm. They could be like, the, the slide came to me. But when you get the one-on-one -on -one opportunities, you're supposed to win, and he was winning them. So um, mm -hmm. he found the way to get himself better and, and end up with nine sacks, nine and a half sacks, whatever he had as a nose tackle, as a rookie in the league. That's like... That's 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 special, bro. So he just keep building off that. He can be pretty damn good. So that's super rare, man. And then Puka actually told me about some great advice that you gave him. Uh, it was a story where you guys were in the weight room and he was Puka in your room. Always tell that story. You, you said move. No, listen, <laughs> move so <we> again. Got... <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, by the way, dude, that is the favorite dude I've interviewed. Yeah, I love Puka, bro. He, I was like, I wish I played with this guy. He's yeah, like a ten year Puka. vet. Yeah, he, he, but um, he oh he told me that so he was over at my house and you know we had a couple of drinks and he ended up telling me I'm like I don't even remember I I, I, I probably was playing with him if anything probably being you know, nice. that's not my person that's not my personality to be like no, that. anything I'd be like move your ass out the way you yeah. know because I'm playing around with him or yeah. so but mm -hmm. um I, I really don't remember it I remember I worked in there a couple of times when the rookies was in there you know and I probably said something funny like that to him but. I'm not probably just messing with him. So. What do you think about him, man? Like, when did you know he was he was as good as he is? Because he Honestly, is bro, a beast. Um, you know, you see a little glimpse of it at, at camp, but you you know that's camp. You know, I'm I'm over a guy. You got to show me doing game time, and I th I think he started to get real consistent. He started off the first season like with Seattle, and he had a, like a good ass game. He's tough. Yeah. He was playing tough, um, breaking tackles. He was it was just. You know, he's just he's a football player. You know, that that that's that type of player you want on your team, a tough guy that you know that that play hard, that play tough. Um and then from from the first game, bro, and then he was just consistent. You know, then the Colts game ended, I think we ended up going overtime, he ended up making the, the um game winning touchdown for us. And he's just been a consistent player since day one. Um and then it, he just got better and better and better. And it's like, God, I didn't expect him to be, you know, the player he was this year, but you know, in my opinion, to be honest with you, that's probably for any position. Me personally watching, that's probably one of the best rookie performances from any position that I got the opportunity to watch. Because you know, you usually see young guys that play and you know they fall off a little bit, but like for him to had a you know stay as poised as he did through the whole season, as far as like he became a, like kind of a household name as a rookie, and you know yeah. he didn't change. He stayed the same person. He kept doing the same things every single week, bro. And it's like. If, if he if he stay like that, and he stay hungry, and he keep and he and he, if he want to be great, <clears throat> in my opinion, I think he can do some some things that never been done in the, in, in this league. But he just got to keep working. But he, he was fun to watch, bro. Like I, like I really I really enjoyed watching him. All the wars he was able to, um, you know, surpass and and, and things break records he was able to break as a rookie. Man, I would. I, this year, I was just so proud. I, you know, I was the, I'm, I'm 32 years old, so I was the old guy on the team. Yeah, was, like everybody was 24, 20. I'm so, you know, they playing different music in the locker room. I'm like, wow, well, I, I, yeah. like, I feel old as hell. Like I'm like, that's I'm how we, old. that's how we felt when you were playing like Skelly Wizzle. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm, laughs> I felt so damn old, man. I'm like, damn, but. Man, it, it was fun to watch them young guys like come into their own and become make their own little name for themselves, become their own player. And you see them out of confidence and, and they little swagger change a little bit, but they yeah. stayed the same. But it was just about that. Once you get that confidence, bro, it's like 
that's all you need, in my opinion, in this league. You have that confidence. You know you can do it. You can dominate. So. Well, it's way different. Like, he came onto a team that was very good. Like, you came into a D-line that was very good, but the team wasn't very good. So, yeah. like, you come in the door right away, and there's, like, a standard, which I think is probably the most interesting thing. For you coming to the league, you saw it all. You saw, like, what it was like to not be doing things correctly. Yeah, and I'm not saying – Fish is a great coach, but we were not doing things correctly yeah, at that juncture. No. Well, like we just things like yeah that. You know, yeah so we land on the damn bags while the offense is out there probably not even paying attention so yeah it's little stuff like that that yeah. if you want to be a championship team it's about discipline it's about structure and um you know like i, I love fish too uh, I, I enjoyed them but i think we just had a lot of young guys that you know you, you get we just had a little bit too much freedom at some time. of the young guys yeah, yeah that's what it was you got to be a little bit more strict a little bit more structured with young people young players so what made Sean McVay great to you? Because I'm sure when you first met him, you were like, who is this guy, dude? Yeah, you, I remember he's like 30 him. years old, the whole thing. <laughs> but he, he seems like a hell of a football coach. He, obviously, from when they talk about the X's and O's to the game, from an offensive standpoint, that's like I, it's, it's like no other. It's member what plays that he's able to remember every little moment of that play and explain it to him in, in great detail. Even he'd be in our meetings and he'd learn our terminology and we'd be out there, he'd know exactly what's going on. He, he, like. No, you're supposed to do this, and he's helping out on the defense, too. So, um, it, it, as far as the knowledge of the game, man, he, he's a genius when it comes to, come to, come to that. But as a person, bro, like, you know, you, you want to have good coaches that's good on the field, but, you know, that, that care about you way more beyond football for me, bro. It's like, you know, you guys – because we all, man, we all got feeling. We got a lot of things that go on outside of football that sometimes can affect you with work, you know. And, and yeah. to have a coach that care – more about what's going on outside of football than on football for me um you know that that that, that means a lot and that's why our relationship is, is how it is you know i really love sean um obviously a great coach but he's a great person too bro and uh, when you got a coach like that um that you he got a good close relationship with you know going out there and trying to play on sundays you want to win for a, a coach like that so um he's just a, a hell of a coach a hell of a person man and, um you know we got a relationship that's gonna last forever so Talk about relationships. You talk about everything that goes on outside of football. And, shoot, we've known Erica a long time, dude. Er Erica, <laughs> like Earth City days, man. But everybody always had a great uh, deal of respect for Erica. She was like a football gal, yeah. you know, and, and obviously knew her dad and everything. But I never would have thought – that all these years later, you guys have this beautiful family. We would have uh, never thought neither. That's it's yeah. just how it happened, bro. Tell people this story because I don't think a lot of people know this story, man. It's kind of like a like a football uh, like like yeah. A, I, I, we man, fairy Erica tale. Talk about this last night, man. It, it's, it, I, I say it sounded a little cheesy because it's okay uh, to be cheesy, dude. Nobody's well, gonna call you. you know, me, Eric, we was we was always friends. We was just like you know you know Eric. She's like the she's like the homie. Like, yeah. we, she like she was just we were just cool. Um, you know, it was time we just, she started helping me around the house a lot as far as I was moving. So, you know, I was doing everything by myself. So she had helped me as far as if I'm at the new house, if I can't be there, she would go down there for me and um, let the cable guy in and put the new cable up, set everything up. So, and then we just hang. I'm talking about, I promise you, like when I say we were hanging, it was just like hanging with the homie. You know, we have a couple of drinks. We just chill, vibe, talk. And we just, and it just came something that they ended up happening every day. And we just really got to, got to know each other, bro. We would just be talking. All for like all day, just hanging with each other, and um, you know it, it became you know that every scene or every single day, having that one time you don't see her, it's like damn, I'm starting to like Eric. I kind of miss her. I want to text her, but I don't want to. You, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, damn, I want to mess up her friendship. I'm like, damn, I wonder what she going, what she doing right now. And then you know she ended up texting you. You be like, oh, I wish she, damn, I thought you wanted to come over and hang. You know, and then it became that, bro. And, it, and like. I promised me and her was talking for like months and it wasn't nothing sexual, nothing at all, bro. And it was just like, like that, how you, a relationship, you want to get to know somebody. Like I never been in no, no stuff like that. So it was an old fashioned courtship, bro. Man. I promise you. And we just, and just naturally just grew in love. And it was like, that was my, that's when you knew that was like, I was like, that's my soulmate. Just somebody to make me a better person. She helped me with a lot that was going on in my life, bro. And it's like, you know, when you, when you got a woman that, you know, that betters you, make you a better man, make you a better person, bro. Um, like, I feel like we got like a power couple. You know, we got so much yeah. great things that's coming. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have her, so. Yeah, I, I see that. I see power couple. I do. And I think what helps is, you know, with her dad coaching and her being around the game, she also all, understands, all like, what it's like for game. you. Exactly. You exactly. know? So it's a different it's, – it's stressful, man. Like – 
like there are times during my career where I had lows. And, you yeah. know, I know for you, you probably had a couple of them, but you do a good job of hiding it. Yeah. Having having somebody like that really helps, you know. I'm, I'm, a million times, like, because yeah. sometimes when I felt like, like, you know, it was a lot going on. I'm like, bro, I'm, I can't do it no more. Like, I'm done. For, I don't want to play football no more. Like, I got too much stuff going on. I got to go back here. I got to, you know, going back and forth with Pittsburgh because that's when my two oldest kids was in Pittsburgh. I'm all the way in California. So it was a lot. And then like, having somebody to be able to talk to, that, you know, to comfort you. You know, you still, as a girl, you still need that love and that, that comfort oh. too. So um, she was able my to My wife took too. me to Godzilla versus King Kong last night. And I, <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you. I needed that. Like, like little, things, my hand. Like, <laughs> little <laughs> stuff like that means a lot can go a long <laughs> way, bro. So. Yeah, we're soft, man. Uh, <laughs> Godzilla King Kong suck, by the way. Um, really? Yeah, but Godzilla minus one is incredible. Okay. Okay. So, anyways, I'm going to ask you a couple quick questions and let you go. But um, the first one would be Did you see that LA billboard they put up? I'm sure you've seen it. Yes, I've seen it. How cool is that? That's dope. That's dope as hell, man. Um, that's the, I ain't seen it in person, but I've seen it on the pictures and all the fans sending it, man. That's pretty dope. Um, what's the, is that the one that say Legends Live Forever? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's dope. So, um, they yeah. had that in, in LA, in the city. So, I don't even know where it's at, but the picture, it, I like the picture. I like the, like the, it, it's dope, man. So, I'm going to climb up there and spray paint William Hayes. Oh, that, don't do this. Right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you um, all right. <laughs> hey, um, who's the next you? Is there a next you? Well, I, don't, I, I hate when people say the next you. There's going to be the next. The well, next I'm fucking you. saying it. Who's the next you? <laughs> I don't know, but I think, that, but I th like in my like I, when I did the interview with Erica, like I think that the, if you want to say the next guy that's that defense, yeah, who's player, the next guy? I would say it's right now. I think it's T.J. Watt. You know, I, don't, yeah. I think if you talk about a guy that's consistent, like been doing it year in and year out consistently, that's gonna get you 15 sacks or 13 sacks, damn, 22 sacks consistent. He's the guy yeah. that's been doing it consistently. Interceptions every year, touchdowns. I, like his stats be ridiculous every single year. So. I feel like he's a guy that, you know, um, he's he's that guy to me. I know you got Michael Parsons that's coming up. Um, you got Miles Garrett. Um, you got a bunch of, you know, good players. But in my opinion, from like from at the time I seen T.J. Watt in the league, from the first time I seen him to the last year, he's consistently been dominating in this league. So uh, just a lot of respect for him, and I think he's that guy. So I never thought we'd be having a conversation where we say, is he better than his brother? You know, which is just goes to show you how great he is. Just that yeah. there's even a conversation. Exactly. Different positions, different that's players. That they both, but the two brothers is even like top tier guys like that. That's that's yeah. that's special. That's different. So yeah, it is, man. So um, the Steelers. Did you ever fantasize about playing for that team? I know you were one team guy. You took a lot of pride in that. But like, yeah. I'm sure sometimes you had like a dream where you were running out of the tunnel at Heinz Field. <laughs> I, I would say before I got drafted, probably yeah. I would be like. You know, it would be dope to play for my hometown because I grew up a Steelers fan. Maybe even like probably like my third year in the league when I was, you know, you know, we were still we wasn't a good team. And then it was about time to start talking about contract stuff. And I didn't really know if I was going to stay with the Rams if I wanted to because I wanted to find a game. I wanted to win. I wanted to be yeah. a winning team. So that probably, you know, I flirted with that idea a little bit. Maybe I, I could go home and play for the Steelers. But um, that was it. You know, once you – to let it find yourself and you, you know, it's hard to, you know, have a routine, you know, everything where everything is at, be with a team, build relationships. And then you got to go somewhere and start all over again. For me, I just, I, that never was something that I wanted to do. You know, even people like, you don't want to at least have one year with your, your last year and be with the Steelers. I'm like, I'm like, why would I want to go somewhere for one year and just, I understand it's my hometown, but I'm like, to me, I just, that just don't, that's don't turn me on to do that. So, yeah. Um, what was the lowest you ever played at and what was the highest you ever played at? I'm talking about 265, 300. Is that the range or oh, what? I ain't never touched 300. So, my first two years, I played at probably 280 to 285. My third year was around 270, 275. And every other year, I played at probably 260, 267 sometimes. In 2018 was my lightest year. I played that whole year probably around 250 to 260 that whole year. I was I was 258 in the Super Bowl in 2018. Oh, dude. I was 258, 258 as a defensive tackle in the National Football League. In the Super Bowl, I weighed 258. 
that year I was playing. I was playing at two fifty to two sixty that whole year. You guys, how did think. that? How did that feel? Did it feel? Did you lose strength? Hey, I'm, you know, I, I work out. I all know the, you. I, I you yeah, don't I even have to say. You know how I am. I, you know, even I always keep my strength, bro. I got, I like, I got to lift. I, I got to feel the weight. I just yeah. trim my body up. I change. You know, my my second hold out back to back. I'm all I'm doing is working out every Fresh day. Legs. Just training. You know, um, so that's all I was doing. And like my body, that's when I got like a six pack. My body started like 18. That's when my body really changed. So um, I don't know, bro. And then we would, we would blowing a lot of teams out. So we got the opportunity to rush a lot. So it mm-hmm. just felt like fast as hell. You know, it was just fast, quick, use a lot of quickness. What do you think about Raheem Morris and how he's going to do it in Atlanta? I was a big fan of how y'all's defense played because, listen, some of those guys. I didn't know much about him going into the year. Exactly. I mean, not, no knock on them, but it was, you know, you were there and you had a couple pieces, but there were a lot of guys that he had to get playing, and I thought he did a good job. What do you think he's going to do as a head coach? I think he's going to do great things. I love Ryan. I think he's a hell of a coach, bro. Like, he make it comfortable and he, he, make, he make it fun, but he motivates you. When it's time, when it's time, he, he know, he know the, 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 the right things to say to have you in that meet. You know, when your legs shaking, you get the chills. You're like, you, you ready to run through a damn wall for this guy. So he, he's that type of coach, but he make it fun, bro. I think he's going to um, do some – be a great head coach. I, I even watched the um, they team meeting yesterday. I think they posted a video on the NFL with his first team meeting. And just li- I, li- I listened to the whole thing. I was like – you know, if, if if I were playing for Rod as, as my head coach and he and he came with, I'll, I'll be ready to play for him. So I think he's gonna do some great things, bro. Um, I think he got some good pieces on his team to um, have some success, man. I'm just I'm just hoping everything unfold the right way for him. So yeah, I'm rooting for him too. Uh, all right, well this 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 is a good one. I'll ask you one tough question and then we'll finish with a with a good question that you'll be happy to answer. Okay, when I asked Reggie Scott to tell a story, <laughs> it's a story I already know. And that's the story of you removing a guy's face mask I do, I do, I do. with your hands <laughs> in a football fight. Um, I wasn't there for this one. I just missed this one. Man, I okay. the there was a time I feel like people didn't know not to fuck with you. Like, I watched Mike'd Up from that Lions game where you yeah. got you were getting held a lot. Like, uh-huh. and it was like way back. It was Same like 2004. It's your rookie year. That was my second year. I'm out or second year. I'm out there fixing your jersey. It's like ripped because people are holding you so much. And I I heard you say to a guy, I'll give you one more, I'll give you one more chance. Yeah, don't touch me. And and, like in 2024, if somebody hears that, they're not gonna touch you again because they know what you're about. But back (laughs) back your second year, I feel like there was a time where people tried you. You had guys try that they know or they seen and they just didn't. What did they not know, Aaron? They, I, I think, you know, people don't understand. I'm an alpha male. Like, this, who I am, I've been this way my whole life. If you ask anybody from low league to middle school to high school to college to the, to the pros, nothing changed about the way I play the game. Nothing changed about my attitude. Nothing changed about I don't don't disrespect me. Don't do nothing disrespectful because I can't allow myself to feel like you you trying to punk me out, like bitch me. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an alpha male. I can't help it. So I think a lot of people think this is a some they don't know. It's not an my, act. It's not an act. This is who I am. It's compulsion. When I've seen you get fucking mad, I can't help. It's just it's just not. <laughs> I can't help it, bro. It's just my, my, you know sometimes time you get so mad you black out and then you be like, damn man, what the. <laughs> But like, yeah, I'm like, man, he shouldn't did what the fuck he did. You know what I'm saying? That's how it be. There's three grown men on the floor. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. Bro, just, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's just who I am, bro. It's just, you know, you know, you got them guys that's going to try you trying to hold and then you get the whoop in the ass and then, you know, they start learning. But I know exactly what you mean, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I wish William was on here. He'd be like, yo, I used to do that to you, Aaron. We were always talking like he did. I remember one time, man, we were, we were in, uh, in St. Louis. You know, we always play nonstop, bro. And we um, and we in St. Louis. We in the, in the equipment room in the back, and he trying to wrestle. He trying to, he grabs me. You know, I'm still, you know, I, I like I like playing. I play with you. I guess out of it. I grab him like this, grab him by his neck. He's like, I'm done. Choking his, his ass and grass or choking his ass. I said, quit playing. That was the last time he ever tried to wrestle with me again. <laughs> Last time I tried to wrestle you, I threw all your shit in your locker, and you picked me up like a kid. I was in a cast. I was, I was, I was, on mad. A, I, I was really mad at you, about that. I know you were, you took, but you took all my stuff out of my locker and threw it. I'm like, that was disrespectful. But you, you were, you were disrespecting me, and you know my code because I'm an alpha male too, Aaron. 
I got a code too. I'm just not as strong all, as you. I take all your shit off your hangers, off your, <laughs> off your lock, and throw it on the floor. I was like, oh, that's just, hey, yeah. I feel bad about that. I really do. I apologize to no, you no, ten no, years no, later, bro. Because no, I probably you get know, mad look, at people sometimes. But I, when he picked me up. When Aaron picked me up and he was kind of mad and I could feel he was kind of mad. Like, you know, like I was like, all right, fuck this, man. I'm too old for this shit. He's too strong. Um, but but I, I just the the face mask story, the reason Reggie brought it up was because he said that in the case of an emergency and he's, of course, the head trainer for the yeah. for the for the Rams, who's great, great trainer. Also, we, we shout out Byron Cunningham, who's the man as well. Shout out to Tyler Williams who's in Minnesota. But they they. Aaron ripped the guy's face mask off in a fight, like the face mask, and had I'm him looking gonna, like. I'm gonna tell the story to you. Tell the story. I'm a, from what I remember, it was a, it was the our, in 26. It was our first year in in um in LA. We were out, um like 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 Orange County, no Oxnard. I'm not. We had, at Oxnard. Um, it's OTAs, and it's not even my fight, bro. It was Gene and Greg was fighting. Of course. Of course. Um, it's a scary ass fight. I'm like, yeah, you know, Gene, you, my, my, they, they know, they got quick, maybe about to fight. And this big, big offensive lineman, I think he was a rookie, just comes over and like try to, you know, try to touch, touch Gene while he's trying to fight. I'm like, no, nah, we ain't going to do that. They going to, they going to, they going to, they got their own little situation, but ain't nobody going to jump in and touch nobody. So, you know, and then he tried to fight back with me. Other things happened like this. And then I ended up, somehow his face mask came off. I smacked him two times with it, boom, in his head and just, and just do it. And <laughs> you threw it? Yeah, I just do it. I just do it, bro. And, and no, everybody's okay. You know, it was over. and then it was over. It's, and everybody it's not just, like you yeah, hit him with a helmet. You hit him with a face mask. Now you see, he's, he still got his helmet on with no face mask. And you turn around, this shit just looked like. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like one of those old school football people. Yeah, exactly, bro. It's just shit with just smushed, no cage, just helmet on. Oh, that shit looked. People were just Reggie. Laughing. Reggie said. Reggie said that he made you the designated guy that if you ever had to like really access somebody's face. On the field, like in the case of an injury, yeah. that they would get you out there to get the face mask <laughs> off. Do you, you remember know, when we fought the Cowboys in Oxnard? Yes, I do. You talking about the one that was? I remember that. I remember. Bro, we it. whooped their ass. I remember it. Didn't they, we had beers on the bus after? It was the best shit ever, dude. <laughs> the Cowboys, they came. That was crazy, and, bro, I remember it. Bro, it was like so much. It was like a fight there, fight there. You think it's over? Then somebody come grab somebody, thumb to the ground. Then they come out. Happened all the way by the fans on the fence. Dude, so, we're, there's footage of us on the fence, and there's Rams fans leaning over the fence getting shots <laughs> in. Um, that was, that's, probably the bra, that's probably the craziest brawl that I was ever a part of, bro. Dude, there were people running like a like a medieval battle Man, in the middle of the crazy. field. I didn't know who to hit. I was just running through like, <laughs> and there were cops on the field. Anyways, that shit was crazy. Okay, last last question for you. Got, got some good fighting stories. I, I bet stories. you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to press you to tell too many of them, but I like the way you were like, I can't help it. I'm an alpha. I mean, that's exactly what it is. Like, you just can't help it. Um, any advice for the people making your Hall of Fame bust? Do you want do you want a certain haircut? Would you like this smile? The yeah, I want this smile here. This smile right here. <laughs> I, I want I want this 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 face trim and everything. This fresh okay. thing, just like this. You know Just hold, hold, hold still for the camera for a yeah, second. Man. That, Indeed, that's man. what that's what we want. Aaron Donald as featured on the Green Light Pod, April fourth, two thousand twenty four. <laughs> How long are you gonna go without crying there? I don't know. Again, you never know until until it's, you know what I'm saying. I don't know, bro. Like emotions is emotions. I don't know if it's gonna be you know whenever that time come or leading up to. I just you just never know until until that time come. But I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna. I'm going to cry like a baby for sure. I, I know that. So Okay. Who are the guys you don't want in the front row so you don't have to make eye contact with them? Shit. You, Will <laughs> Hayes, Eugene Sims. Oh, bro. You're going to have us in the back? I can see. I can, have walk, I can see right now. Y'all, I can see it, bro. I already know. Uh, I already know. So. Uh, we'll, we'll be there, man. And I love you. I'm so proud of you, dude. I appreciate um, you, Just like you did everything right. You did, and, and uh, you got a beautiful family. You got a great future. It's just getting started. So, yeah. if you ever need advice on being washed up, I can give you that. <laughs> <My God. laughs> Congrats, man. I appreciate you. You know, it's all love. My love, you. I love you to death, bro. Like I told you when I text you, like, like you's a part of me being where I'm at. You know, that coming to the D line room, I came in to have you 
to have Robert Quinn, Michael Brockers, Kendall, um, Will Hayes, Eugene Sims, like to come into a group, group, a good group like that, bro, and y'all make me feel how I felt, and like I felt like y'all motivating right away, like y'all seen it, y'all was like, bro, you, you going you got the talent to be something special, you know, and and to hear that from guys that you know you watched on TV and that there was a play, that played in this league already that seen it and. You know, it's motivation, bro. It's like motivation. And y'all motivated me more than what y'all know by just saying them little things like that for me to have that confidence to go out there and do that, bro. And like, um, for, forever love y'all. But we, we, well, we were we right, locked, weren't we? Locked we locked in for life, man. We, <laughs> we were locked. right, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, hey, right. broken clock is right every now and again or whatever they say. Uh, and, and you know what's cool about you is we feel like we're a part of your journey in a way that like, hey, you're going places we didn't get to go. You know, and when you do things, we feel like we're a part of it. And so it's a two way street, man. We love you. We appreciate you. Enjoy retirement and uh, hope you come back soon, brother. I love you, bro. Love you, man.